welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon, and I love being with you every day. But this is just an amazing, fun, festive season. I love this time of the year. I love that we are celebrating the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. And no matter what you're going through today, no matter what you're facing, I want you to know that God is with you. He cares, he sees, he knows. One of my favorite scriptures in Isaiah 9, 6 says, a child has been born for us, a son has been given to us. The responsibility of complete dominion will rest on his shoulders and his name will be forever the wonderful one, the extraordinary strategist, the mighty God, the father of eternity, the prince of peace, great and vast is his dominion. He will bring a measurable peace and prosperity. He will rule on David's throne and over David's kingdom to establish it and uphold it by promoting justice and righteousness from this time and forevermore. That is our promise and that is who we celebrate. So cheers to you during the season. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and celebrate Yeshua. Celebrate Jesus no matter what you do. Now today, I have an amazing man of God, Apostle Ken Malone. He is one that is a strategist on prayer. He positions men, he positions women, he positions the army of God. In fact, I think he's a commander. God has called him and his wife, Cheryl, for such a time as this. Their heart for Florida and the nation is absolutely amazing. It is vast. And today we're gonna hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to him to help you get in position to pray more effectively as this new year begins. So before we go to him, let's go to this quick message. Want more Come Home? Keep the conversation going online by connecting with us on social media. Hear more from Jen, learn more about our guests, and connect with other viewers on Facebook and Instagram. Follow at Jen Mellon to find out more. Welcome back. It's such a wonderful season. You know, Hanukkah is December 18th, uh, Jesus's calendar birthday on the Gregorian calendar is December 25th. And no matter how you feel about culture or how you feel about this season, I think it is a beautiful time. It is a time when we're all focusing on the birth of our Savior, our Messiah, Jesus Christ. It's, there's no better time to talk about what would Jesus want us to do as we're preparing for the coming year. And I believe on the very top of that list is to get back to prayer, communicating with him, expressing, vocalizing, being in his presence, hearing his heart, and then obeying what he says to do. And so our guest today is Apostle Ken Malone. He and his wife, Cheryl, have been living an extraordinary walk for God. They pastored in Satellite Beach for well over 20 years. They're still pastoring, just a little bit different, but he is on the cusp of the apostolic movement, going around, issuing a clarion call for the church to awaken and arise. He is very in touch with intercessors, very, uh, passionate about awakening revival, specifically in Florida and then throughout the nation. He partners with other ministries that also have a very similar calling and they are seeing amazing things for Jesus. And we get to hear from him today. Apostle Ken, thank you so much for thank being you, with Jen. us. Merry Christmas to you. Isn't it a great time? Yeah, Yay. Okay. Tell us just a little bit about your life, how this calling was birthed in you, 
the struggle to receive the calling and just how things are unfolding in the prayer movement, the apostolic and the prophetic movement. I'd be glad to. Um, I was saved in 1976. That's a long time ago. <laughs> and I, but I was also filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke with tongues that same year. And uh, I had a burning desire in my heart uh, to preach the gospel. I didn't know where it would lead. And so I began preaching in jail. Uh, I would preach in nursing homes. My pastor would let me preach monthly. And uh, so I kind of cut my teeth doing that. But one of the things I really cut my teeth on was prayer. Wow. And Cheryl and I lived in the country. And uh, we're from a small town in Alabama. And so we, um, we didn't have many, you know, Pentecostal or charismatic churches in that area. And uh, so I would just read the Bible and where I read where Jesus went out in the wilderness and prayed all night. Oh. Well, we lived in the country, so I would take my sleeping bag and uh, go out into the woods there and pray and just spend the night. If I got tired, I'd lay down and take a nap. My dog would come with me and our cat would come. The dog, he stayed the whole time, but the cat wouldn't stay. Well, that's a cat, but <laughs> yeah. you had a very spiritual dog, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And so I cut my teeth in prayer yeah. and uh, and I just have always been a person who went after the Lord in prayer and sought God, you know, for what he wants to say, what he wants to do in the earth. And then the calling of the Lord came very strong uh, to go into the ministry. And then but Cheryl was resistant. I didn't understand <laughs> that. And there was a good reason she was. It wasn't time. Yeah. And I was doing something like many young ministers try to do. They want to quit their job and yeah. launch out into the ministry. And my wife was actually the one who said, no, I'm not doing that. Ooh. And I didn't understand timing at, the, at yeah. that time, but it caused some conflict. And so I, I decided, well, you know what? I'll lay this down. I won't do this. I won't insist on this. If the Lord does it, he'll have to do it. So about two years went by, and I worked at the paper mill, did shift work, and I came home off a midnight shift to a wife that was weeping. Oh. And she had, we still don't know where it came from, <laughs> she had opened the bureau drawer, and inside there was a card. And this is what it said. It says, so your husband wants to go into the ministry again. Why don't you follow him this Ooh. time? So she took me by the arm then and said, let's go. And to this day, we don't know how that card got there. I know the Lord put it there. Probably an angel. Was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was one of the first beginning of many confirmations and signs and wonders that we've seen over the last 40 years. And um, I'm so thankful that the Lord did that. And I'm so glad that um, she made me wait because it's all about a timing issue. Yeah. You know, Apostle Ken, women are very sensitive to timing. And I think that's because of a monthly cycle. It's because of childbirth. There's just things that we kind of go through winter, spring, summer, and fall every month. So for some reason, there are times we can zone in on timing. But thank God that you were Absolutely. a man of God and a sensitive husband because you could have resented her or felt like she exactly. was holding you back because you had that passion. Mm -hmm. And so it's got to be right way, right time, exactly. right order. Exactly. I tell people uh, all the time, especially um, male ministers, if you're not hearing from the Lord, just ask your wife. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you she's hearing. <laughs> and she'll tell you, help you get on the right track and right direction. Cheryl's always writing down sermons and she'll hand it to me. She'll say, you need to preach this, you know, and it has to speak to my heart to do that. But uh, many times she's done that and I've preached from the notes that she wrote, you know. Well, y'all are one. Yeah, exactly. So if he wants to download exactly. it to you or download it to her, hey, same, same thing, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. She's precious. I tried to get her to come with you. But she graciously declined this time. Exactly. We're not gonna. No. We're not gonna let her off the hook, though. No. We'll no. keep asking. Keep asking. <laughs> I just wanted you guys to talk about 
you're you're going to be married almost 50 years. Yeah. That's a sign, miracle, and wonder. It is. Especially in it today's is. culture. It is. And we need to be taught. You know, the first two years of our marriage was a real struggle. And even after that, but we got saved. And when we got saved, we still had to learn how yeah. to be a man and woman that was married. Um, you know, we both have very independent spirits. And, uh, and so it's easy for each one of us to want to have our own way uh, and insist on it sometimes. But we learn through the years to process things. And so I have it today, I have what's called a threefold cord of accountability. And uh, it consists of my wife, yeah. uh, my apostle Dutch Sheets, and a spiritual daughter by the name of Wendy who lives in Lakeland. I raised her up to be a prophet. Wow. And so whenever God is speaking to me about something, I bring it to all three of these people. If one of them says no, I won't do it. I want all th three of them to be in unity. I remember a couple of years ago, I was trying to get at least one of them to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody would say yes. But the threefold accord for me is a very strong cord that keeps me on track. And a lot of people have um, gotten away from accountability. That's right. And I uh, just do their own thing. And, and usually pay the price for it down the road. It's dangerous. It is very dangerous. Well, the, the Trinity is three. Mm -hmm. I call them the three that agree. Exactly. And so you've set that same mechanism of wisdom and protection and safeguarding in your own life. And a, a lot of young leaders and ministers and pastors can learn from this. It saves you a lot of heartache. Yes, yeah, it does. Um, can I talk about your show just for you, a moment? You can. Be. I absolutely love the name Come Home. <laughs> it just resonates uh, loudly on the inside of me, mainly because of what the Lord has been speaking to me over the last, I don't know, three or four years. Um, come Home is a word of reconciliation. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid and my mom would open the back door of the house and say, Kenny, it's time to come home. <laughs> You know, been out all day long, yeah. but it was a voice that you heard, even though she couldn't talk loudly as a woman, it's a voice you still heard. Yeah. And you immediately came home. Usually what we called back then supper was on the table. Yes. And so we would come home. But today it's such a reconciliation word because God is reconciling us. Uh, it's a reconciled time for the body of Christ. Yes. He's calling us to come home and lay down our differences that we have. Uh, he's calling us to uh, come home and become the one person with the rest of the body of Christ. You know, in, in Psalms 133, we all know this very famous scripture. It's a very good scripture. Behold how good and pleasant it is for the brethren right. to dwell together in unity. unity. And it says at the end of that uh, verse, the end of the verses, this is where the Lord commands the blessing. Yeah. One of the things that we've missed in that verse of Scripture is the word dwell. Mm. Unity is a noun. You can't do a noun. Dwell is the verb. So behold how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell. Yeah. So we learn how to lay down our agenda and dwell with one another for the greater cause, and that is the kingdom of God in the earth. The other thing that resonates so loudly with me concerning uh, the name of your program is the prodigal's return. Yeah. And about four years ago now, the Lord visited me one summer and he said, it's the time of the prodigal's return. They're weeping. It's time yes. for them to come home. Yes. And I've been proclaiming that message since then that the prodigals are returning. I've yeah. had one. <laughs> that has returned. In your family. In my family. Yes, go and Jesus. So, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and so it's such a powerful time. And I wanna share with all of those watching uh, that it's the time of your prodigal's return. Amen. Keep mentioning their name before Amen. the Lord. Keep talking to the Lord about them and keep their name before Him because they are going to come home to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's time. It is time to come home. Yes, you know, as you were just sharing that, I, I literally saw 
just a vision of Abba Father, you know, opening the gates and just calling over the balconies of heaven. Yes. Come home. Yeah. It's time to come home. You know, it is. the banquet tables being set, yeah. and it it is a it is a huge time for prodigals, for the lukewarm, for the backslidden, for those who have thrown down their mantle and aren't walking in their giftings. Thank you, because there are many prodigal pastors yes. today that have gotten away from the Lord, and many of them are going through the motions in the pulpit every week. Yeah but they've lost that fire. Yeah. They've lost that zeal for the things of God. But God wants to restore that. Yes. And, and you know, one of the things that hinder us many times from coming home is the self-condemnation yeah. that we place on ourselves, the judgment that we place on ourselves. But I would say to all of those that are away from the Lord or the prodigals, the Lord loves you just like you are. Yes, he does. It's time to return. <laughs> and when you get home, He's going to take care of everything. He is. He, he is. Sure is. Cuz that's who he is. That's who he is. Well, you know, this is a this is um, you know, this is a season of Hanukkah, it's the season of Christmas. It is the season of miracles. It is the season of um and with God nothing is impossible. And one thing I love about the Hanukkah story is is the Maccabees and mm -hmm. it's all about uh, lighting and fighting. And as you were talking, I feel that's part of your ministry is lighting men on fire, lighting uh, the church on fire, lighting people on, on, on fire, but also fighting. And you fight in prayer and you teach other men to fight in prayer and you teach leaders to fight in prayer. And you go to these four regions in Florida and really work with the intercessors and the pastors and you teach them how to fight and take back. Yes. Share about that a little bit because that's powerful. I will. Uh, the calling the men to prayer is actually relatively new for me. Uh, I, most of the prayer that I led and, and, and intercessors that I've led have been women and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm so thankful for the women intercessors. I, because of them, we're at a place we are today. But last uh, August, a year ago, August 24th, 2021, I had a dream uh, that really began changing who I'm going to lead. And in this dream, Cheryl and I walk into a facility, Dutch Sheets is speaking, but he's not down front where normal speakers are. He's in the middle on the right side and so it just felt strange and the whole atmosphere in the building was not conducive for revival. Hmm. So we take a seat next to Dutch and we chit chat with him for a while. And then it's time the, the worship begins in this dream. And the worship was bad. <laughs> I mean, it was really bad. It was uh, some retired pastors and nothing wrong with retired pastors, right. but they were trying to bring something alive out of the past and there was no fire on it. Yeah. And when you thought it couldn't get worse, it did. <laughs> and then in the dream, it was time for Dutch to get up and speak. And so he goes up there to the stage, reaches out for the microphone, and the worship leader would not give it to him. And so finally there became a wrestling match, both in the spirit and in the natural, for Dutch to have the mic. And finally Dutch prevailed. And in this dream, Dutch holds the mic up like this. And the moment he does, the Spirit of God falls in the place. Mm. And every man is on the floor, Oof. face down, Oof. crying out to God for their state and for their nation. And it was the kind of prayer that was a travailing kind of prayer, the groaning prayer that comes from deep within. And, uh, and then as this was going on, Dutch begins to identify the different men. There were two from each state in America. Wow. And he identifies each one of the men. He comes to me, he says, I know this man. This is Ken Malone from Florida. So I'm watching this dream. And as I'm watching the dream, the Lord speaks to me as I'm watching the dream. And he says, I'm calling the men to pray awakening revival into America. Thank you, Jesus. This will be the game changer. Thank you, Jesus. So we have been rallying the men for the past year 
to come into a lifestyle of intercession, a lifestyle of prayer, because this will be the game changer. Uh, not that women can't pray, but it's time for the men to step up. And we have, we've given up that place over the years, but it was not true in the Bible. Yeah. In the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, men carried the torch yeah. of intercession. And I believe that this will be the game changer in America. And one of the things that we're finding as we go all across this state and into other places as well, we made the call in Kentucky at Cane Ridge and, uh, and the men stepped up. One of the things that we found is the men are really wanting to pray. They just have not had a man to lead them. Yes. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a man to lead them. Yes. And once we begin getting the men organized, I believe that we're going to see revival begin to break open in different parts of our nation. Well, I'm 100% in agreement. I know by the Spirit that God's charged you and put that mantle on you to be that apostle over intercession and men rising up and being the high priest of their home and a friend of God and Absolutely. bringing his spirit. And I will tell you, if a woman is a woman of God, then she will welcome it because yeah. the women army have been praying for the men to rise up. Well, this is something that we've discovered is that the men, women are excited yes. about these men rising up. Yes. And in this dream, one thing I didn't mention is that each man's wife was standing beside him <sighs> in approval and blessing what he yes. was doing, but also watching. They became watchmen for their husbands yeah. to keep anything from hindering them helping to give birth to awakening revival in America. So it's going to happen. It is. It sure is. Because God's faithful. He is. But he, but he expresses his heart and what he wants to do on the earth through yielded, surrendered vessels yeah, like exactly. you, you that cut your teeth on spending time with him in the country on your sleeping bag with your dog. That is the genesis of I can trust him and I'm going to mantle him with this to lead the army. I'm so grateful that you said yes. And I love the vision because when you have a vision, then you can articulate the vision. You can articulate the women are, where the men are, what the spirit is, what the attitude is. And I really believe that going into 2023, you know, going into 5783, that we are going to see this more and more. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, it's literally building as we move into this Hebraic year very year, very soon, and then into the year on the Gregorian calendar. Yeah. We're moving into a season that is literally building. I really believe that the bowls of heaven are full and at the tipping yeah. point. Yes. And it probably will only take a few more prayers to tip it all over. Yes. And, uh, and we are going to see, I, I remember during the charismatic days, because that's when I got saved, part of the Jesus movement, part of the charismatic days. I was a, a uh, country hippie. If you can, <laughs> I had, Those I had were, hair, that's an enigma. <laughs> yeah, I had a hair about as long as yours. And, uh, and so, um, but I'll never forget those days of the charismatic movement where God was everywhere. I yeah. mean, everywhere he was, there he was. Yes. I mean, I was under conviction that when Walter Cronkite would say good night and God bless. Oh. I, I was convicted. Wow. And, uh, and you know, at that time, there were more prayer meetings at home yeah. than there were church services. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. But this time on steroids. Amen. I love that. Okay, so Apostle Ken, we just have a couple minutes left. I love your ministry, you know, the forerunners. Uh, that's what you've been your, your whole life. I feel that there are men watching, there are women watching, there are intercessors watching. I just want you to, to flow, minister, and just release what's ever inside of you to them where they are right now. I will. So I just want to tell you that God's hand is high, highly upon you. His hand is very heavy in your life. It's a good heavy, but he's going to come to you in a powerful way and overshadow you. And there's someone watching, I felt this a moment ago, that 
the Lord has been calling you into the ministry yes. and to launch a church. And the Lord's hand is on you to do that. And I would encourage you to begin to press into that and go ahead and take that step and take that leap. Also, there's a lady at home somewhere you have been really struggling with your children and God sees that he's going to come to you. He's going to bring help to those kids in Jesus name and help to you as well. So I want you to just believe God. He's coming to your family. He's coming into your home also. And so it's a great time. It's a great time to be alive in our nation. Uh, and if you're in Florida, uh, Florida is on the edge of revival. And I, you know, we have so many people moving here to Florida that it's just, uh, it's amazing. People have said to me, aren't you tired of all the people moving <laughs> at, here into Florida? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I'm setting them up for the harvest Amen. and all these people that are coming to your state, our state, God is setting them up for the season of harvest. Jesus yes. said in Matthew nine to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest field. And I want to encourage you to do that, to pray to the Lord of the harvest. He's going to send those laborers into that harvest field. Amen. So let me pray for you if I can. So I just want to pray for you. So Father, in Jesus' name, I bless everyone watching with the Father's blessings. Yes. And I decree over you today that you're the head and not the tail above and not beneath. I say that everything you set your hand to is blessed and that the Lord overshadows your life mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was powerful, that was precious, that was so purposed for right now. Look, this season, no better time to come home. Apostle Ken prophesied it, he talked to, about it, he spoke into it. The Father is saying, come home, prodigal, come home, lukewarm pastor, come home, discouraged mother, come home. I was radically saved watching Christian television, just like you are, and I came home, and you know God's no respecter of persons. Come home, come back to Jesus. Just give your heart to Him. You may have taken a thousand steps away, and He's only one step back. God is with you, and He's for you. You are precious. Please pray for this ministry. Partner with this ministry. Write in and tell us what's happened in your life. We're so grateful for you, and Pastor Apostle, Kim, thank you so much. I'm honored to be with you, Jim. We'll see you soon, and Bless we'll see you, you soon.